It's being called one of the worst cases of its kind in Canada. The Humane Society and the province of Quebec have seized more than 500 dogs and puppies. These are the most rewarding experience that you can have. And you know there are problems out there. We've all, we all know they're in existence. And it, you can either ignore them or you can complain and whine about them or you can do something. Okay, folks, I got a craziest scenario for you. A government dystopia to scare you with. One day, we're going to give charities the right to act like police. Human animal rights groups, they're going to become the new human rights tribunals. And one day, the, the most famous lawyer in the country, he's going to go up against an elderly low-income lady for the crime of not brushing her dog's teeth properly. The case, it'll, it'll be in a low-ceiling hotel room with minimal publicity. Stop your joking, Fury, you say. That day, that day's never going to come. No? Actually, the very scenario I've just painted happened not too long ago. It's been unfolding in Ontario since last May. The decision on it was released last week. Acting on an anonymous voicemail complaint, the Ontario Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals went into 64-year-old Jessica Johnson's home, took all her animals to a vet. Then when they found out that, well, only one was ill, and by ill I mean it had gum disease, they gave her a court order. She fought it, saying her charter rights were violated and that they should pay all her costs. Well, the Animal Care Review Board, hmm, adjudicating it, sided more or less against her. And that famous lawyer I mentioned? Well, that was Clayton Ruby. You remember that guy. He's the guy who tried to take down Toronto Mayor Rob Ford. Jack McLaren joins us now. He's the MPP for Carleton, Mississippi Mills, and he actually created a bill last year in 2012 that would have gotten the policing powers away from the OSPCA. Fortunately, that bill didn't pass. Jack, so tell me, First of all, what's your response to this whole Johnson scenario in a nutshell? Well, the Johnson case is an absurd example of what's wrong with the OSPCA. We have flawed legislation. We have an organization that's uh, supposed to be looking out for the humane treatment of animals or preventing the cruelty to animals, and they've become infiltrated by animal rights groups who are extremists on that point of view. They're single-issue single peoples, PETA and other groups like that, and so we they... The, the legislation is flawed because basically the enforcement body within the OSPCA, which works within a charity, therefore it's sheltered from any oversight by even the Minister of Correctional Services or any MPP or even the Premier himself. Nobody can go in and tell these folks what to do. There is no body of oversight or, account, oversight or accountability. They are effectively, as the Lesage, Mr. Lesage in the Lesage report, who wrote a report on what's wrong or right with the OSPCA and what should be changed. And he said they are effectively a private police force without oversight or accountability left only to police themselves. And yet they work within a charity where they must raise money to pay for the operation of the organization, which includes their own wages. We would never have our policemen required to write tickets to pay their own wages. So why are we doing that, that with the OSPCA? We can fix that. And that's what we tried to do with our private members bill in March of 2011. And we came close, and we thought we had a pretty good idea, and we had big support from people across the province, animal owners and others. Um, and we were, we, effectively, it took police powers away from the enforcement people of the OSPCA. They've had it for a while, since, since like 1955? They have. That's and the, orga the organization used to function in a, I would say, an appropriate manner because they had good people on the board of directors, good, fair-minded, unbiased, open-minded people whose, whose agenda was to truly look out for the welfare of animals, but also treat people with respect, people in this case being the owners of the animals. Because we have to remember, people must be respected. Uh, you know, first, we're, we're out to look after animals, but we have to also have due regard for people and their rights, which are enshrined in Canada's constitution. And so the question for Jessica Johnson was, were her constitutional rights to be free from unreasonable search and seizure, which is Section 8 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, were they infringed upon? Um, the Animal Care Review Board, uh, which we've never viewed to be a very credible body and tends not to give us the justice we're looking for, because they're biased towards the OSPCA. This isn't a court. It's important to let people it's know. It's a tribunal. It's, it's a tribunal created by the government by the province not too long ago to hear cases just regarding the OSPCA. Correct, correct. So um, in, in the case of uh, Jessica Johnson, she had a nine-day hearing just for just this tribunal, as you say. It's not a real court. Um, and, they just, and the OSPCA got Mr. Ruby to come in. He's probably the most expensive lawyer in eastern Ontario, in Ontario, in Toronto. Uh, I understand he could be $10,000 a day. And so... 
and then he had his assistant with him, which would be a, another big charge for nine days. It could have been two or three hundred thousand dollars. And the crime that Jessica Johnson was potentially guilty of was a, having a little dog that had tartar on its teeth. Now I understand they heard about this because of an anonymous complaint to a phone line, a, a voicemail message. They didn't even speak to the person. What's to stop someone from making a call like that ab about me or about any of the viewers at home? Just a random complaint. Well, Anthony, that's the problem. There's nothing to stop that from happening again and again, and it does across Ontario. So, and the lack of accountability allows for that to happen. The Animal Care Review Board said even though the warrant they got to crawl in through Jessica Johnson's window into her bedroom of her house while she was asleep on the couch, um, where there was missing information on this warrant, the uh, member of, uh, of the board on the tribunal said it's still an adequate warrant and so it's still constitutional. And um, we differ with that uh, at my office. We think this is very, very wrong and her, and her rights as a human being in Ontario were, uh, her constitutional rights were infringed upon. Jack, uh, we, we only have a short bit of time left, but I, I did notice on their mission statement online, uh, the OSPCA, they do say that in order to obtain enforcement powers, many independent societies affiliated with the OSPCA, uh, they, linked, they, they linked up so they could better affect human rights laws and conditions. It seems like they're all joining together so they can take advantage of these laws. Like every, all these other groups want to get in this association so they can all have the ability to do this. Well, all the groups they're talking about are the animal rights groups. So they're all from one side of the page or one, you know, one attitude. Uh, and this is, is happening across North America and in fact across the Western world that animal rights groups are becoming very well funded, very well organized and very single issue. Um, and that, that's what's happening here. So now they've infiltrated the OSPCA and what used to be a good fair-minded organization has become very biased, very unfair. And, and you know, you never need oversight and accountability until things go wrong. Until you have, right. I'll use the word bad cop and I don't, I, I don't, I use that somewhat carefully. But you know, that's why you need oversight and accountability in case there's a bad apple in the barrel. And right now we have a barrel with quite a few bad apples in it. Jack, sadly, we're out of time, but I thank you very much for coming and telling us about this, your efforts to fight it. Folks, if you want to, uh, if you want to learn more about this and also learn how you can help poor victims like Jessica Johnson, there's information and there's a fund at ontariolandowners.ca. Check that out and send me your thoughts on this. And maybe stuff like this is happening in your province, in your hometown. Anthony.fury at sunmedia.ca.